High praise indeed. Giving praise where its due is important, as is receiving it graciously and without awkwardness. Three experts share their tips on the art of praise. By Jessica Muddit. Why do compliments often make us cringe with self-consciousness? While some people are adept at graciously accepting positive feedback and bask in the warm glow of recognition, most are left feeling a little uncomfortable. Nearly 70% of people experience some degree of anxiety about giving and receiving praise, according to research by Christopher Littlefield, the founder of workplace recognition consultancy Beyond Thank You. Yet, the same research has found that 88% of respondents associate praise with feeling valued. When we hear that we are doing a good job at work, it sends a signal to us that we matter, and that is crucial to relationships, says Little Phil. He says, most of the conflicts I see in organizations are the result of people not feeling valued. Their boss may actually appreciate them. But if the employee doesn't know that, it often turns into resentment, followed by distrust and disengagement. Christopher Littlefield believes that part of the awkwardness stems from being unsure of how to respond. Training courses typically don't focus on praise. In contrast, delivering criticism is considered an art to be mastered. Praise is also intimate, and that can spark feelings of embarrassment. Someone is sharing how they feel about us, or how they experienced something we did, and often the person is seeing something that we didn't see or didn't want them to see, he explains. They're also sharing an opinion of something that we didn't expect, and often it conflicts with our own paradigms of ourselves. Some people simply believe they shouldn't accept praise, that there is something wrong with doing so, says Jacqueline Whitmore, international etiquette expert and founder of the Protocol School of Palm Beach. From an early age, most of us have been taught to remain humble and not be arrogant, egotistical or too proud, she says. Some people feel unworthy or undeserving, while others try to deflect attention from themselves. Some people undervalue the importance of their contributions. Some feel more comfortable putting the spotlight on others instead of themselves. Christopher Littlefield calls out the tall poppy syndrome, which tends to discourage people from accepting compliments, because standing out might be perceived as negative. He says, we learn to avoid recognition because we fear being excluded from the group. We forget that when people are recognizing us, they actually want us to feel good, he says. Those who consistently struggle with accepting praise may be paying too much attention to what self-development consultant, coach and author Angela Di Paola calls that darn inner critic. She says, many of us have an inner critic who tells us that we're not good enough and will never accomplish our goals. It comes from many different sources. It could be past experiences of having failed or being put down. The inner critic, she says, feeds on our emotions and insecurities and makes it very difficult to accept compliments because we think the person must be being insincere. However, deflecting or rejecting a compliment comes with the risk of undermining the person who is giving it. They may even walk away feeling insulted. There's also the possibility of appearing falsely modest or guilty of an irritating humble brag, like, I hate my Ferrari. Police are always pulling me over just because it's a Ferrari, and they assume I'm speeding when I'm not. When Christopher Littlefield set out to discover the best types of compliments, he realized that people were more interested in telling him about the worst types they had encountered. 
He interviewed 400 people on the Boston subway and identified what he describes as ineffective recognition practices. The most common is buttering someone up with a compliment and then asking them for a favor. Or the sandwich feedback model, which is where two hollow compliments are given in between a slice of criticism. Another is pity praise. For example, a colleague bombs a presentation, but instead of acknowledging this, we pretend it went well. Each approach is inauthentic. Christopher Littlefield says, when we do these things, we actually break down the relationships that we were looking to build. He says, instead of giving a compliment on the fly, pause and think for a second. What behavior did you see that had an impact on you? Be specific. Also consider how the person would wish to receive the praise. They may not enjoy being the center of attention, in which case it would be preferable to send them an email or a voice message, rather than addressing them in a group setting. If feeling unsure about how to respond to praise, Little Phil suggests keeping it simple. This is far preferable to awkwardly trying to deflect or reject the praise or countering with a compliment of your own. A gracious reply to a compliment is simply saying, thank you. If it really meant something, you could add, that's really great to hear, Little Phil suggests. Dee Paola says it can also help to consider the other person's perspective. Take a step back and a deep breath, she says, and recognize that people actually don't have to compliment you. So when they do, it's generally coming from a good place. Recognize that they themselves are being vulnerable by giving you that compliment.